I want to get you this update. Israeli troops have raided Gaza's largest hospital. The IDF says it entered al-Shifa's facilities after a days-long siege. Thousands of Palestinians are reportedly trapped inside the hospital. Israel says it's conducting targeted raids on the facility. It is sweeping the premises looking for Hamas hostages, tunnels and equipment. Now, al-Shifa is a key target of uh, Israel's ground offensive in Gaza because both the Israeli military and the U.S. believe it's being used by Hamas as a headquarters for its operations. Hamas denies those allegations. Israel says it attempted to provide aid and fuel to the hospital as conditions continue to worsen there. Al-Shifa has reportedly run out of fuel and is no longer considered operational. CBS News' Tina Krauss brings us more. A senior Israeli defense official says at least four Hamas militants were killed in a battle at Al-Shifa Hospital in Gaza and that Israeli soldiers found weapons and concrete evidence Hamas is using the medical center as a headquarters. When we entered the hospital, there was a small engagement with, uh, with gunmen, with Hamas gunmen. There was no patients harmed. We're not uh, capturing the hospital or overtaking the hospital. More than 2,000 patients and civilians are still believed to be inside the sprawling complex, including dozens of newborns. Israel's military released video showing aid being delivered to the hospital. <laughs> but this doctor says patients on life support had to be moved into hallways after an Israeli airstrike destroyed treatment rooms. Patients on stretchers moved through corridors filled with smoke from shelling. There are similar scenes across Gaza. Four-year-old Ahmad Shabbat lost his parents in the war, and now his legs. His uncle asks, what did he do to deserve this? With Hamas still holding some 240 hostages, families of the captives started a five-day protest march from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Help us shout, bring them home now, bring our families home now, they don't have any more time. Family members are demanding answers, why more is not being done to bring their loved ones back. Tina Kraus, CBS News, London. The U.S. is ramping up its efforts to help free Israeli hostages held by Hamas in Gaza. That's right. Israel estimates that more than 200 people were taken during the October 7th attack. Eight-year-old Emily Hand is believed to be one of them, a, children, a, ch a child there held captive. Now, she was at a sleepover when Hamas militants stormed the kibbutz where she was staying. Emily's father was originally told that she was killed in the attacks. And he was understandably emotional as he spoke to Vlad and Anne-Marie earlier about the moment Israeli officials told him his daughter may be alive and a hostage in Gaza. I remember just thinking, no, 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 no. That's just, that's awful. And I didn't, I didn't want that news. Why not? I know what she. I know what she's going through. Just even if she's been treated nicely, even if she's been right, she's terrified. Mm -hmm. Every hour of every day, she's terrified. She's kidnapped. She doesn't know if she's ever going to be go home, see home, be released. She has no idea. She's just a prisoner, captive. I'm sure every day she's saying, where's daddy? Where's daddy? Why, why isn't he coming to take me? Why, why? She has no concept of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Emily's birthday is this Friday. She'll be turning nine. We want to bring in now Lauren Whitney Gotbreath. She is a world editor at Axios. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu has said now is the time for action and that answers will come later. Obviously, there's a lot of emotion in this, uh, but do most Israelis agree with his sentiment, with that mentality? 
So a lot of uh, a lot of Israelis, of course, um, believe that uh, Hamas has to go. Um, however, Netanyahu is definitely facing more and more pressure um, as the time goes on. There's more calls for him to resign. The question is whether or not resign now or after the war is over um, in, in the eyes of many Israelis. And then he's also facing growing pressure um, over the hostage situation. Um, you know, a lot of the families of the hostages very much want him to make a deal to release um, Palestinian uh, uh, Palestinians who are held in Israeli prisons um, in, in exchange for all of the hostages. Um, you know, we do see reports of uh, much smaller deals on the hostage situation every day, but we've yet to see a, a big deal come through. So he's definitely facing more and more pressure um, as time goes on. It's an important point you make because everything we're watching, from the images from the hospitals to hearing from Emily Han's father, it's all so traumatic and difficult. But the question becomes, well, what next politically? And in Israel, you mentioned Netanyahu facing all this criticism um, for some of his own policies and for, in some people's views, allowing the October 7th attack to happen. Um, how much pressure is there, though, for some type of political solution in Israel? Because this conflict itself will, will never really subside. Anytime sure, soon. I mean, that is, a, that is a great point. The conflict itself, um, uh, you know, uh, if, at least in the eyes of many Palestinians, um, won't ever fully cease until the occupation ends. Um, that being said, uh, you know, I, th I think a lot of um, Israelis are very uh, concentrated on the war itself um, and, and sort of the emotion, as you, you said, um, following, you know, the October 7th attack. Um, however, we we have to remember uh, Netanyahu was facing a lot of political pressure before October seventh as well, right. um, and uh, you know that that pressure isn't necessarily going away. If anything, um, how he uh, either handled the, the sort of lead up to October seventh and then also after um, it has definitely increased that pressure. Um, so again, it's it's you know in a lot of people's eyes, it's less of um, less of if if Netanyahu goes, it's more of when. Um, that being said, you know, he he is someone who has been in power longer than any other uh, Israeli prime minister. Uh, so, you know, he, he definitely knows how to play the political game in Israel. Um, but at this point, I think a lot of people are still very focused on the war. And Lauren, on that point, I think it's really, it's an important point that it, sort of internationally, things are painted with a broad brush. Israel's faced international backlash for its bombardment of the Gaza Strip, along with the rising number of civilian deaths. The person who's, call, who's making those calls right now is Netanyahu at the top. Uh, but I'm wondering, when we're talking about the greater Israeli population, what do they see as a success in this conflict? Yeah, I, I do think um, a, a lot of people believe Hamas needs to go um, and be destroyed. And then I think the other big thing is that the hostages um, are freed. So those are the two things that I think um, ultimately would be successful for a lot of Israelis um, in, in the short sort of term. All right, Lauren Whitney Gottbreath, thank you. Thank you.